This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, we should know what the definition of an asset, liability, equity, income and expense. Do you? You sure? I challenge you to just write them down now. Just get a blank page of paper, put in the headings, assets, liabilities, equity, income, expense, and write down what they are. Go on, try it now. See how you get on. Stop the video, uh, do it, and then come back and see how you get on. Okay, stop it now. Now, hopefully, you've started it again. Some of you are looking at me going, Chris, why would I want to write them down? Well, if you don't write them down, you're not going to learn them. And by being active in your learning, you will be able to go through there and better memorise the definitions and therefore better able to apply them. Yeah, so... If you didn't write them down, shame on you. There are the actual definitions. Okay. I think the equity income expense are reasonably straightforward. It's the asset and liability definitions that are a little bit challenging. Now, we need to be a little bit careful because as we move through the accounting standards, we can think about the definitions of assets, liabilities, income and expense. But what about the recognition? What about including them within the financial statements? What about taking them out of the financial statements. We have to make sure that, yes, even though it meets the definition of an asset, it is allowed to be recognised. It is allowed to be shown within those financial statements. So we have within the framework, the baseline benchmark definitions for recognising assets, liabilities, and also de-recognising the assets and liabilities. Again, uh, the recognition criteria is different from what we had previously. Uh, so now it says that the recognition criteria is about including it in the financial statements. That makes sense, doesn't it? Surely that's what recognising is something all about. But there we go. And it's only appropriate, i.e. it can only be included if it results in relevant and faithful representation. So that's going back, isn't it? to the qualitative characteristics, okay, of relevance and faithful representation. Uh, the definition is totally different from what it used to be in the past. It used to be a probable inflow of economic benefit and measure it reliably. If you look at it now, there's no probability criterion that's been stripped out. Uh, and also there's no measurement criterion as well. So let's just go back and see whereabouts that the measurement fits in. Because if you go into those fundamental qualitative characteristics and look at, is it there your relevance and faithful information? Well, you can see it there. Okay, uh, we're going to include it. We're going to recognise it if it makes a difference to the, to the decisions made by the users. Okay, so by including it, it's going to help them within their decision making process. If it doesn't, we cannot put it in. Try justifying to the auditors that you're not going to record an asset because uh, it's not going to make a difference. It will make a difference, again, based upon its nature, but more importantly here, its materiality, its size. So that starts to bring in the, the measurement aspect as well, doesn't it? And if you think about your faithful information, your faithful representation, uh, yeah, uh, it's complete, neutral, free from error, all that shenanigans, but what about measurement uncertainty? That impacts the level of faithful representation, doesn't it? So if there is a level of uncertainty with regards to the measurement, then maybe we should not be including it within the financial statements. OK, again, uh, you can look at things and say, well, there is always going to be some uncertainty with regards to measurement. But that's where by now the framework has said, well, look, these are the measurement bases that we have. And therefore, uh, that reduces the amount of measurement uncertainty. So you should be able to measure uh, a significant portion of your assets, your liabilities, okay? because you have measurement criteria. Uh, De-recognition, not very exciting at all, really. You remove it, uh, basically, when there's been a loss of control, which if you tie back to the definitions of your asset, uh, one of the definitions is that we had control. So if you no longer have control, do you recognise the assets? Makes sense, doesn't it? So if you've sold your item of PPE, boom, it's gone. You don't control it anymore because you've sold it to somebody else. Uh, and then with your liability, 
you need to recognize it when there's no obligation. Well, again, that comes back there, isn't it? The definition of a liability is that you need a present obligation. Well, if you've paid off the liability, there is no obligation anymore because you no longer owe anybody the money. There is no obligation, so therefore de-recognize the liability. That's it. There's the definitions. And that was the application.